Are you a man looking for an intensive program to help you overcome your sexually addictive behaviors? Gateway to Freedom is your answer. Gateway to Freedom is a three-day intensive workshop for men seeking to overcome sexually addictive behaviors. Whether married, single, or divorced, Gateway to Freedom will help men regain hope for a new life of purity and real contentment. The workshop is conducted by experts in the field of sexual addiction recovery. Your experts have over 35 years of combined experience. Read testimonials of workshop alumni at gatewaymen.com. Get all the info and register online at gatewaymen.com or call 1-800-49-PURITY. Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I'm the founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop. I want to personally invite you to be part of our next intensive coming up March 28th through the 30th. So call us today at 1-800-49-PURITY or visit gatewaymen.com. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pure Sex Radio Broadcast. We're glad to have you here with us. My name is Jonathan. I'm here with Stephen. Stephen, how are you doing? I am blessed and glad to be here and excited, and uh, I am in the favor of the Lord this day. Excellent. Well, listeners, before we get started, uh, we want to just let you know that we are a listener-supported broadcast. What this means is that the only way these um, uh, radio programs get produced and then distributed is just through the, the generous financial partnership of, of listeners like you. So if you'd like to come along and partner with us, you can do that through our website at puresexradio.com and then just click on the donate link and you can find out about all the ways that you can partner with us. And uh, we are currently on uh, six radio stations uh, around the country, and then we also have the podcast that gets distributed around the world in over 80 countries. And we'd love to be able to expand that. We actually are fairly regularly contacted by even radio stations around the country that like our content and want to have us on their station, but we simply can't afford the the, uh, the airtime. So if you'd like to come along and partner with us, that helps us to expand the uh, the broadcast. Well, Stephen, you have left me in the dark on this particular Good. Uh, session because, folks, when Stephen comes in, he said, hey, I had a walk this morning, and I want to, I think I've got an idea about something, but I just want you to write down a few things about how a man should see a, his wife, and then I'm going to leave the rest of it sort of mysterious. And not <laughs> Wide know, open. Sort of, so that would be my question to you. Uh, you know, as men, as husbands, we've... We're told about wives and, and, you know, we've heard sermons and radio shows and ministers and friends and older men. And, you know, this is how you ought to look at your wife. This is not how you ought to see your wife. So I thought I want to go down that list of things that you know and have heard and I've heard and, and put it on the table. And then I want to share one that I got myself just this morning. It's really fresh. Okay. So to tell me, let's go down your list. How have you been told you should view your wife or look at your wife? Let's go down and make a list together, can we? Well, and and I guess I'm I'm compiling this from from several resources. And folks, just re, re, be reminded that this was spur of the moment. Like this happened. I wrote this stuff down five minutes ago. I didn't have a That's chance it. to really. This is spontaneous think it radio through. here. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> and so I I immediately started thinking of scripture verses. I started thinking of uh, certainly maybe some things that pastors I've heard from pastors and just my own thoughts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, That's what I want. The, the thing that popped up uh, first was just when actually comes from, from Genesis. He's, when God said, I'll make a helper suitable for him, meaning mm. when he made Eve, God himself saw a wife as somebody that, that, that was to help yes. this man. Um, so one way I think I see my wife is somebody who needs to help this guy because oh, I need that's help. Too good. <laughs> that is great to come alongside and help you. And of course, God's so good; it goes both ways, right? Absolutely. But but your wife is your helper. Excellent. Good. We can build, but let's go keep our list going here. We can expand on any of these we want to. I was also thinking, uh, right after I thought about the idea of helper, I thought, you know, also, she's a partner, mm. meaning we, uh, you know, if I can put it this way, I think a, a wife, a husband and a wife are to share life. Mm-hmm. So it's not, it's not mine and yours anymore. It's, it's ours. And so I see my wife as a, as a, a partner. 
So it's kind of like when I talk in the workshops about the difference between me thinking versus we thinking. So I see my wife as with me wherever I am, even if she's not physically with me. And in that sense, I think that's true partnership. That's somebody who's... That's good. She's a Because she's partner. always a part with you, whether she's physically there or not. Yeah. And you and her are connected physically, emotionally, sexually, spiritually, right? Whether you're together or not, you're one. Yeah. Keep going. That's good. Um, another thing I thought, and this is where, you know, again, a lot of verses were coming to my mind. And keep in mind, I'm trying to answer this question, how should a man see his wife? Or maybe how does a man see his wife? Mm -hmm. I try to avoid kind of the should word. It's kind of, it can be kind of a shame word sometimes, but. Right. Um, I thought of when Peter, and by the way, Peter was an apostle who was married, so it's not like he talked from a place of no experience in that realm. Uh, but he talked about the wife being the weaker vessel. Now, keep in mind, he's talking, I think, primarily about physically, that mm -hmm. men generally are just stronger physically than a, a wife. And it made me think, I need to see my wife as tender, as, as, as somebody who, who needs mm -hmm. me in order to protect her weaker parts. So meaning, I believe, listen, if my, and this, this may be a silly example, but I think of it in terms of, okay, as, as her husband, I need to offer my strength to her physically. No, I think that's great. Meaning, I mean, it could be silly things like, I, I, not silly mm -hmm. things, but small things like, I can't open this jar of pickles. You know, sure. I mean, just stuff like that. That's And I, carry heavy loads and use your big, bigger back to do more yeah. work. Yeah. So I see her as, you talk about helper being mm -hmm. working both ways. Well, I see that as a way that I can help her where she is weaker I, I can come in and, and help, but I, I see her that way as somebody who needs help in those weak areas. And then would you also say, I guess, that makes you her protector? Yeah, I think I mean, so. I mean, we're not talking about us, but 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 weak and in need of help and assistance and protection from whatever's out there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. keep going. That's good. I think also, um, you know, I immediately thought, too, of Ephesians 5, where it tells us as husbands to love our wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And so I immediately thought, well, that means I need to see my wife as an object of my love. Hmm. So not, a, not an object of my wrath, not an object of my judgment. And, I, and listeners, just so you'll know, I told Steve immediately before this broadcast, this was going to be very convicting for me because I, as soon as he said, how should a man see his wife? I thought, oh, man, this is going to be convicting because I don't always see my wife this right. way. And I want to be very transparent about that, that I don't, I don't listen, this may be how I need to see her. But unfortunately, I don't always make her the object of my love, right. you know. Uh, sometimes I unfortunately do make her the object of my anger or frustration. But I'm okay, seeing as far so you as stop. I You're should... being too real here. But... <laughs> you know, we're supposed to say butterflies, rainbow, happiness, yeah. good times. But I appreciate your honesty because I, I do think this can be overwhelming. And we don't think all of these. But I think it's helpful to remind ourselves. And that's sort of what you're talking about. It's like, this is a good day to remind yourself. It is. And, you I, know, and I think it is. I don't, I don't think it's ever wrong to keep the bar high because mm. God puts the bar high. I mean, love your wife as Christ loved the church, basically right. die for her. So he doesn't, he doesn't lower mm. the bar just because we struggle and have sinfulness. I mean, that. like the church. I right. mean, did you just say we should see our wives like the church? So Jesus, right? Yeah. Loved his church and we're supposed to love our wives at that level. Mm -hmm. Sacrificial, right? Yeah. Is the one we sacrifice for. I'm just going to add that to the list because mm -hmm. that's what just popped out. But go ahead. Were you going to say anything else? I didn't mean to cut you off a minute ago about this is a good time for this talk in your life or something. Yeah. Well, just because I think, I mean, for anybody who's been married longer than five minutes, you know that there's, <laughs> you know that there's, there's these, uh, this roller coaster that happens in a relationship right. where you have, you have seasons where it's like, man, everything aligns and you're yes. just, you're close and you feel close. And, and then you have other seasons where it's like, it just seems like work to talk. You know, and 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 so there's ebbs and flows to the relationship, but I think because we can have some of these standards where it's like, okay, I need to have some markers that say, how should I see my wife? Mm -hmm. And if I can be reminded of these things, and husbands out there, if you can be reminded of these things, it can, 
I don't know, it can create sort of a um, a baseline maybe for for that relationship so that you realize when you're when you're down, when you're kind of in those valleys, mm-hmm. you've got something to pull you up. When you're on those peaks and those mountaintops, you've got something to make sure you understand reality. You know, it's mm-hmm. like it keeps you grounded. In a good place. In a good place, yeah. How are we doing on your list? You I got, got a couple more you things. You got more? Let's hear um, some more. One is, and this this comes maybe not specifically from my my wife's words, but in the context of how she speaks, um, I would say that, that I'm to see my wife as a jewel. Or another way to put that would be a, a treasure. Mm. And And then I also put that with my last thing that I had written down here. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yes. And so, um, and and ladies out there, don't focus on the thing part, okay? So you just focus on the good part. Yeah. Um, but the idea of good, treasure, a jewel, there's a value to a wife that is immeasurable in a man's life. And I think it's important to see a wife that way. Because then sometimes some of these other things will start to fall into place when you see your wife as a treasure, because then what will happen? Well, don't you want to love what you treasure, and then don't you want to take care of whatever might be valuable or tender in her, and what do you, don't you want to partner with and help? And, you know, it's like a lot of these other things, I think, fall into place when, when that's a fundamental value that you have, that she's a, she's a treasure. That's good. Is that your list? That's all I could come up with in five minutes. (laughs) That is good. You did good. I only came up with five myself. So, so I would like to add in, in your statement about a partner, you know, since this is pure sex radio, uh, she's a sexual partner too, Mm -hmm. right? And that's a challenge because of her sexual background, your background, that whole idea that it's a training ground, right? Where people learn to give and take and share. So she, a wife is a sexual partner, and she's a spouse, which is just a label, but, but uh, we're trying to make this whole list of titles that we've heard. Um, and the whole idea of, of oneness, sacrificing for her, and she is, she is one of the places where you practice oneness, being one, mm-hmm. right? So that, that is the theme of the kingdom. We're one individual, but as a couple, we're one. And as a church, we're one, right? And there's one faith and one hope and one baptism and one, right? That one theme. And so a wife is also how we enter into oneness. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he is, this, this is a daughter of the king that we're talking about. This is the father's daughter, right? Mm -hmm. This is, we're talking about, his creation, right? That's that's who this is. She's a wife, but she's his creation. That's who we're married to, his creation. Mm-hmm. And a daughter of the king. So someone perfectly designed by her father um, to be complete and then to be part of the oneness program where she too find someone in this oneness concept. And you just think about what does oneness mean? It means harmony. It means peace. It means unity. It means togetherness, right? And he said, I want that in my church, and I want that in my people. I want that in my marriages. I want this oneness theme where highly valued people that are treasured and seen as good that help each other. Um, so I guess now I launch into what I got this morning when I was going for my walk. Because some of you know this and some of you don't, that my wife died seven years ago. And so I've been single a long time, but I'm going to get remarried. And I was talking to God about this getting remarried and a fiancé and how should I see her. And I'm just walking and talking. And, you know, I'm a marriage counselor, so, man, I've got a head full of problems and conflict. and I mean, i got a lot of stuff, you know. But how should I see her? That was my question, Lord. How should I see her? And I wanted to go through this whole list because every one of these is great. And if you're camping on one of them and it's helping you, then wonderful. But this thought came to me. He, you know, it's like God speaks a little, you know, in, in quiet thoughts in my mind. 
And he said, this is a rose in my garden. This is, this is my creation. And this person is a rose in my garden. Now you think about who God is, right? He's the lover of gardens. Right? He loves, he made the first garden and he made man and woman for the garden. That was the perfect setting. He didn't make them a house. He didn't make them a castle. He didn't make them a dugout or you know, lean to. He, he made them a garden. And he said, this is the perfect place where I want, you know, sons and daughters to go play and love. So this is the lover of gardens saying, your wife is a rose in my garden. So she has standing with me. She has recognition by me. She has beauty designed by me in her. And she has standing with me. And I want you to take this rose and help it blossom and flourish and i want you to do whatever it takes to nurture that soil and 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 water that soil and be a part of protecting this rose as this rose grows into a big bush and becomes this huge plant who's who's all you know full and not um single alone Doing what they can there, and no, no, not diminishing that state, but but entering all of who you are with with this great possibility of a person arose, and and with God's environment, this great garden, you sort of be an assistant gardener. Now, this is not a perfect metaphor because it breaks down. Because I think we're all roses, really. But mm -hmm. but if you will, we're sort of gardeners in His garden to help take care of this. His rose. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, I, I, I know my my wife will love this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of women out there that are like, yes, yeah. You know, they're kind of in their in their car, or, you know, walking on along or whatever, and they're listening to this, and they're they're saying, that's it. That's exactly. What I've wanted my husband to know, that's exactly what I've wanted to feel in my own soul. Because I think sometimes this isn't just about what a wife may or may not be receiving from her husband. Mm. I think what you're stating is something that brings out a truth about what she already is from her father in heaven. Mm. And there may be some wives out there that are maybe for the first time hearing something about their their standing before God, their value before God, their their preciousness and um before him yes. in his garden. <laughs> That's good. That maybe they've not heard or received before or felt in their own soul. And that's there first. It's right? already that's, there. That's yeah. that's inner design. That's her father's thought of her. Is that and if no one ever said this to you, then let us bless you. I'm gonna say it and you say it, okay Jonathan? You are a rose. You are a beauty. And you ha have your father's marks all over you. Your heavenly father's beauty marks all over you. Mm -hmm. What would you say? I would say that you have, you were planted by the gardener. Yes. You were planted uh, where he wanted you. You were planted in the, in the soil that he, he made for you. Um, which I, you know, I'm just now getting an image here, Stephen, because what did, what did God create Eve or Adam out of? Dirt. Dust. Yeah. And so, and what did he create Eve out of? His, yeah. his side. Yeah. And this, this rose thing, think about it. Could it be that where God planted this rose is in the soil of her husband. Wow. <laughs> that he's planted her in his, uh, you know, he's the dirt. <laughs> she's the, wow. she's the rose. And, and so there's, there's this intimacy of her growing, um, you know, togetherness there. But I would just say that e even with that imagery, ladies, your value though was spoken before you ever met your husband. Yes. Your, your the color of your petals was determined mm. before you met your husband. You have from the from before you were even planted, God had the seed of your life in his mind. He already knew yes. 
everything about you. And he said, I want to put you in a very special place. I want you to be somebody that that has is full of color and life and that will bless not not just your husband, but think about what a rose does. And anybody who passes it finds oh, joy in it, right? Finds true. pleasure in it. And it's beauty. like, wow, there's beauty there. And I think that's true of femininity, not just cultural beauty. Right, right. But femininity. You know, as a female, there's just beauty in who you are. You know, you're a beautiful female. And that's what your father wants you to know. And and so <clears throat> that's the challenge to us as husbands. Sometimes we get our heads down and we get dirt on our hands and we get distracted and we're building something up or breaking something down so we can build something up and we're busy, 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 and we forget, you know, that that we have a mission and a calling, and that is can you nurture today? Can you bless today? And I was just thinking as far as like a homework assignment, I thought it would be really cool if the men that were listening – would go home and call their wife Rose and say, you're my Rose. Mm. So that would be sort of a homework assignment. And not, and that's because aren't we favored? Aren't we as men favored of God? Aren't we chosen? You know, haven't we been given enough? Do we have to have more and more and more? Do we have to be like gorging on whatever we can grab and gorge on or when is kind of enough enough and we learn to rest and learn to bless? Mm-hmm. You know, we learn to quiet ourselves and do the big things of God rather than the me things and the now things and the, and, and I'm so messed up inside. I've got so much confusion. There's so much noise inside me. I, I can't stop the noise enough to bless you because I got to be busy, busy doing, doing. Uh, it's like, when do you get to rest and quiet so that you can do the mature thing that men are supposed to do? You know? Well, and you know what I was just thinking, too, <clears throat> is that, um, you know, the most significant relationship in this Rose's life mm. is her husband, right? Yes. And who has the power more than him mm. to cause her either to flourish or wither? So and and not that I'm putting all 100% of all of the No, he's the not God. Money, he's not God, but he's but in terms son of God. But, yes. But let's let's talk in reality <clears throat> here too and and meaning that yes, we have there are spiritual truths that are true about us regardless of what happens in our circumstance. Yes. But there's also human relationships and we cannot ignore the fact that we are affected by those. You know, and so and so if a husband is is unwilling to relate with his wife as that rose, mm. then that's going to have an effect on her. She, she yes. might, she might have, you know, uh, brown petals and everything's withering, and because she's not being watered by her husband, she's not being nurtured, you know, nurtured yes, and, and, filled. and fertilized, and all yes, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And, and so, so, I just want to say that I think sometimes it's not only about the husband's on the, you know, on the positive side, but we have a very real negative effect that we can have in that blossoming process as well. And so I think, you know, your homework assignment was to, um, was to, you know, call her Rose. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe my homework assignment would be to take our lists here. Mm -hmm. You know, if a guy's listening to this, maybe go back, you know, all these podcasts are free. They're MP3s. You can go back and pause it and do whatever. Go ahead and write down our list, add whatever you need to write to the list and then prioritize it. Say what are the what are the areas? Let's let's pick the top three that I'm really the weakest at right now. In terms and of nurturing a in, wife. In terms of how am I going to begin to okay, I've got the I've got the mental image of her as a rose, right? Okay. We've got these other things on our list though that maybe connect with that in a practical sense of okay, how what is you know, helping and she's my spouse and what about a And her protect being a her protector and, and value, yes. Okay. Right. Then, and you're saying how do we build all this together, right? So there's a harmony in us. Exactly. So we can all, we can not be divided and go, well, she's just my sexual partner. That's all she is, a sexual partner here. Right. Oh, no, wait a minute. You got that off. And, and that's the other thing. You bring up another good point there. I think, especially for guys who've been consuming a lot of pornography, involved in a lot of other kind of sexual secrets, um, they probably are going to have a very narrow 
view of their wives. Mm -hmm. And so part of what this might help them do is to broaden that out and say, you know, she's not just this one dimensional being. Mm -hmm. And, and so maybe this idea of a rose in the father's garden, the father's garden. She's a project that you can participate in, right? And that you can do the father's work. You can be the father's hands, right? You can be the father's words. You can be the father's blessing. We're called to do that. And will we rise to that occasion or will we keep our face down in the mud, piddling around in mm-hmm. the dirt, you know, breathing in dirt, clogging our nostrils, getting all messed up, getting our systems but all. But you, you better clarify and, and help the wives because you just said a word that probably triggered some wives. She's yeah. a project. You know, yeah. and and so that was guy language. The, guy, <laughs> the, the guys understood it. <laughs> That's the, true. The guys got it. Yeah. The wives may be offended by it, but okay. if if I could help, <laughs> yeah, maybe, go ahead, tweak it. Because I understood what you were saying. Yeah. There's there's this lifelong journey. But it could be a mission. Would be another word, right? That's, or a vision. Exactly. You know? the, yeah. I, the idea of saying, because you say it all the time, and I really believe that this is true about marriage too. It's not just individual, but marriage. Listen, this is about growth. Right. This is about That's learning right. and growing. Amen. And in your rose example, it's literally about growth, right? Oh, you you got a seed true. that was planted and there's this that's blossom true. and it grows into this big bush. Yes. And, and so I think if you understand, okay, the mission is to help this rose grow right. so that she can flourish in the fullness of all of her beauty and, and, you and know color. What, what just came to me is like there may be vines crawling on top of her, right? There may be bushes intruding. There may be trees shading her so she can't grow. Things in her life that she needs you to help her with to create some space. Mm-hmm. So will you help create some space so that she can grow and blossom? And know? that's what I think you were meaning by the idea of project, mission, vision. The idea is that as a husband, we're to come along and help her in that process. Yes, yes. And and you know what? It it works both ways. There are things that obviously she needs help. We're all about growth mm-hmm. together. But since this particular program is specifically about right, the wives. That's right. And the wives need a vision for to look at their husbands, right? This is only half. Right. I can hear the guys out there going, well, what about the other half? Yeah. Tell them about the other half. <laughs> it's like, okay, guys, breathe. Sorry. We're talking about the wives right now and nurturing right. them. We're going to knock the guys in the head and say, you know, straighten up, you guys that are acting like lugs, and the guys that are on the right mission, we pat you on the back and, and with a Jesus pat and say, keep going. Your father's smiling. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll rough up the guys and encourage the guys in another program. So what I hope will, what I hope has come out of this particular program is that, ladies, first of all, you maybe have heard something about your true value and worth mm. and beauty from this example that Stephen's given about you're a rose. rose. I'm yeah. going to keep till the show ends. I'm going to say you're a rose. <laughs> well, you are a rose. And, and guys, I hope that you will you will see your wife that way and begin to uh, treat her in such a way to help her grow. You're a rose. And that is the end of the program because we're out of time. <laughs> you but. are a rose. Don't forget it. You are a rose in the Father's garden. Bye. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here again next week on the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. Pure Sex Radio is paid for by Be Broken Ministries. Visit us online at puresexradio.com. 